Sicilian history ties itself closely to Joseph. In the Middle Ages, a drought threatened the island, and Sicilian lore credits prayers to Joseph for the rain that finally saved the fava beans. In Gloucester, the novenas for St. Joseph begin nine days before his feast day, which is the third Saturday in March. In years past, Gloucester's Sicilian women gathered afternoon and night to sing the rosary and pray to Joseph for sick friends and family, for relatives lost at sea, to help them in times of distress, and quite specifically to help them with work. That prayer quite beautifully asks for his work in its ideal form. When we had finished singing the novena each night, it was followed by coffee and many homemade Italian pastries each woman would bring to share. We would serve and clean up and return home sometimes after 10 each night and look forward to the next night. At the end of nine days, on the actual feast day, those same women came together to bake the traditional St. Joseph's Day bread, shared with friends in their family altars, and to prepare the great luncheons. Felicia's Aunt Fifi laid out a St. Joseph lunch for more than 100 friends and relatives. The dishes are very specific and traditional. St. Joseph's Day comes during Lent, so the celebration is meatless. In Gloucester, there is always St. Joseph's pasta. The pasta handmade that morning with a garanza, a Gloucester Sicilian word for sauce, of chickpeas, fresh favas, cauliflower, and fennel fronds, clearly a dish to be eaten on the cusp of winter and spring. In other communities, the St. Joseph's pasta included breadcrumbs, meant to represent the carpenter's sawdust. In Gloucester, there's always a selection of fried fish, whiting, smelt, and haddock, the St. Joseph rolls, and for dessert, the crowns of Zapoli. Felicia recollects the days when she was a child and the city seemed to stop for St. Joseph. Some of my most favorite memories are waking up at 4 a.m., driving to Aunt Fifi's house and making pasta, bread, and several kinds of fried fish. After spending nine straight afternoons and evenings together singing the rosary in Italian, it was really a special time of year we all looked forward to. All over Gloucester, people built altars to St. Joseph in their living rooms. Traditionally, on the day before the actual feast day, Durham wheat flour, lemons, and oranges are placed on these family altars, and the local priest comes round to bless them. The next morning, the women start the doughs for the St. Joseph rolls and the pasta with the blessed flour. The baked rolls are placed back on the altar for visiting friends, traveling around the city from altar to altar to collect along with the blessed lemon and orange. At 12 noon, our entire family and many friends would squeeze into my aunt's home for the feast we had prepared. We handmade everything. There was always a line, and I mean a line, out Aunt Fifi's front door and down her front steps, of people holding small containers to be filled with a sampling of some St. Joseph pasta. It was like bringing a gift of gold home to share with their families, said Moen. We ate as a family, and then served extended family and friends cleaned up and were ready for a special three o'clock mass, followed by one last coffee time at which we finished the novena by again singing every song in my aunt's book. Don't ask me how, but everything seemed to always go as planned. It was truly a family effort. Can you imagine going out every night for nine days in a row with your friends to pray for everyone else, and then grocery shopping and cooking for 100 people? with probably 20 of your favorite friends there beside you to help. Heather Atwood, Gloucester Daily Times, March 15, 2011.